I'm here with Kieran McCluskey of Talis at DSEI here in London. Kieran, thanks for talking to us today. Just give us an overview about your approach to tactical communications. Okay, well, at the show this year we are promoting a multi-domain integration. Uh, which covers uh, the gathering and the dissemination and the intelligent use of information from all domains to support uh, to support ob your objectives on the battlefield. A key part of that is the communications that underlies the uh, the networks that can share that information, disseminate, collect, etc. Um, and uh, my area is in the tactical communications. So this is the communications right at the forward edge of the battlefield. Um, the soldier radio is perhaps the radio most forward in the battlefield. Um, really key for not just the coordination of the soldiers on the battlefield in terms of delivering the effect, but also in this MDI, we can gather and sense information from those people forward in the battlefield and pass that back. It could be soldier hums, it could be stores, it could also be the environment in which they're operating. So where does the soldier radio actually fit in as the part of the overall patchwork? Okay, well the soldier radio, by its name, it's, it's carried by the soldier. There's limitations in that respect because we can't have a huge, uh, huge radio. So we must concentrate on the, the size and the weight, the endurance of the radio to make sure that the soldier doesn't have to carry lots of batteries. Um, at that bottom level, the kind of services that that soldier needs, firstly, voice communication. So if we are coordinating an activity, very important that, that we know uh, that, that people are informed and know what they're doing. Also, uh, location tracking. We want to know where our soldiers are. Two reasons: safety, very important to make sure that we don't uh, we, we don't engage our own our own soldiers, but also uh, in terms of tempo. If we know who's closest to a particular target or a particular situation, we can we can make arrangements for that that group to engage or that group to do the evacuation, etc. Um, and taking that further, then we ne we want to use these soldiers as sensors. So the idea then that we can uh, gather other environmental information, which may be of little relevance to that particular soldier, but in the overall battle uh, battle space, that information may be crucial to make decisions elsewhere. What's the company's overall approach to tactical communications? Okay, well, Talis uh, Talis takes uh, the tactical communications. Um, approach of, uh, we have specialist military waveforms. Yes, we use commercial uh, bearers where we can, but that's generally much further back in the battle space. The front end of the battle space, we need to protect our communications. We need to be aware that those communications could be threatened, they could be jammed, they could be spoofed, etc., by enemies. So, so the waveforms that we design are very much around ensuring a reliable level of service. We don't want to get into theater and find that our comms doesn't work, particularly if we've built a concept of maneuver around data and gathering that information. So the waveforms are uh, tend to be simultaneous uh, services. That means that within a single waveform, we can we can encapsulate the voice, the data, uh, blue force tracking, hums information, and it's all delivered under a single waveform. The waveforms will have very low uh, RF signature, so that means that they're very hard to find in the spectrum. And if you can't find it, you don't know that you're there, um, and and you don't know to take action against it. Um, and that's important, particularly for dismounted soldiers. We don't want to give away your location um, more often than not, your, uh, your position, and that's, that, um, keeping, keeping that away from, from the enemy allows you a freedom of action which, uh, which you don't want compromised. Um, so really, keep a low profile on the battlefield from an RAF signature point of view, but have the services there you need. And sometimes that means we have to drop back to very limited bandwidth um, because we just have uh, range issues or we have availability of spectrum or indeed we are we are being attacked by, by enemy. So we need to make sure that we process on the platform or on the soldier as much as possible and minimize the transmission of data around the battlefield at certain times. There will be other times when we have complete freedom of spectrum and we can open up our wideband links and deliver information that we've been collecting perhaps during the day. Yeah, so you need to be very adaptable, basically, exactly. don't you? Yes. Just talk to us a few minutes on uh, D Lods while I'm talking to you as yes. well. Okay. Well, the the uh, the soldier radio um, uh, is probably the most uh, widely uh, largest number of radios that that that, uh, that uh, an army would operate uh, because you'll have that at the lower echelons. So the infantry will all have them. So we have to be very careful. We don't want to create a, a burden here in terms of logistics. So high reliability, very important. 
Um, also for programming it, you want to program the radio and you don't really want to be reprogramming for every mission. So if you can hold within the radio uh, a number of mission profiles, then you can move between those mission profiles without having to recover radios and reprogram them. Um, the key through life cost probably of these radios is oddly enough the batteries. Batteries uh, in terms of the initial procurement, the replacement of batteries through life, but of course the charging of batteries and the logistics behind that, bringing generators in, bringing battery chargers, etc. So a radio uh, such, as, such, such as our squad net radio, which is a battery life of 24 hours, um, is really important because we need less chargers, we need less batteries, um, and through life that can amount to quite a large, uh, quite a large saving. Absolutely. Listen, thank you very much for talking to us. Have a great day here at uh, DSEI. Thank you very much.